I want to see Habib. He's not here. When will he be back? I don't know. Well, where the hell is he? I don't know. I only work here. I'm sorry. I've lived among elephants so long, I've lost the habit of talking to people. Elephants? Yeah. You're a hunter? No, I live with them. I like them. I like looking at them, listening to them. As a matter of fact, I'd give anything to become an elephant myself. Give me a beer. Please. Hey, come with me. I've, I've got a present for your boss. You needn't worry. I only beat him up. Next time, I'll kill him. He works for Habib? Yes. His name is Devries. He's a murderer. I caught him by the lake, just ready to bring down his fourth elephant of the day. You can tell Habib no, that the next time you. I find this piece of filth around an elephant herd, I'll make such an unholy mess of it. The elephants themselves won't be able to do better. for your beer. You haven't even drunk it. You know that tens of thousands of elephants are killed in Africa every year. 30,000 last year, to be exact. 30,000. If they go on like that, there won't be any left. Anyone who's seen the great herds on the march across the last three spaces of the earth knows there's something the world can't afford to lose. But no. They have to capture, kill, destroy everything. All that's beautiful has to go. All that's free. Soon we'll be alone on this earth with nothing else left to destroy but ourselves. People must be made to understand. We must let them know. Who's we? Well, for the moment, I'm alone, but I'm trying to get signatures on this petition to change the law. We'll put an end to the suffering of animals everywhere. We've reached a point on this earth where we need all the friendship we can get. We need all the African herds, all the elephants, all the birds. We need friendship. When a collector like Haas rounds up his specimens to send to one of the big zoos, do you know that he sees half his baby elephants die under his very eyes? You know that the native hunters who work for the ivory dealers still round up elephants by lighting forest fires? When an animal gets caught in a trap, do you know that he lies there for days and days in agony, impaled on the stakes? 
Do you know all that? I know about suffering. How long have you been here? 24 years. No, I didn't mean that. How long have you been working for Habib? Six months. Are you happy here? Happy? I don't know what you're talking about. But I like it here. When I open my window in the morning, and I see all those millions of birds on the river, do you ask them to protect the birds, too? Sure. Well, I must go. Where to? Government house. They've got to sign my petition. I think the governor ought to be the first. He'll sign, all right. He's a decent and intelligent man, isn't he? I told you yesterday, Monsieur Morel, the governor can't see you. He's busy with conferences. There is the drought problem and the Free Africa movement. And on top of everything, there is Mr. Sedgwick's visit. I'll wait. I'll wait all day if necessary. I cannot stop you, Monsieur Morel, but it really is no use. Who is this man Sedgwick, anyway? Mr. Cy Sedgwick is a famous American television broadcaster and columnist. It is most important that he should be very satisfied with his safari. Safari? He's coming here to shoot big game. It is to be the most elaborate safari ever mounted in French Equatorial Africa. And now, uh, you really must excuse me. Now, remember, I must have your reports on emergency water supply as soon as possible. Goodbye, gentlemen. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Now, come on, let's see the arrangements uh, for Mr. Sedgwick. Will you spare me a few minutes, sir, on a very important matter? Monsieur Morel, I really must insist. My dear sir, I'm infernally busy at the moment. You must arrange it with my ADC in the normal way. I've been waiting for hours, sir, both yesterday and today. It's true, sir. He's been here a long time, but... All right. Thank you. What can I do for you? Be brief. Here's my petition, sir. I have sent it to you already, but I don't know whether they showed it to you. I know all about your petition. You must have sent it to me at least ten times. Would you sign it, sir? It would be a very great help. My dear fellow, our first duty is towards mankind. Believe me, we have our hands full as it is now, trying to forestall the worst drought, biggest water shortage for years. Unless we take timely steps, we're going to have people dying like flies. If you could read some of the reports coming in. Yes, I know, sir. I do see. But can't we offer our help and protection to other animals besides ourselves? Yes, yes, I, I'm sure. <laughs> I see you have a very noble opinion of humanity. Now, you really must excuse me. You'll hear from me again, sir. I'm not easily discouraged. You and these wretched animals both make me sick. Think of all the people in Africa with real sickness. Sleeping sickness. Leprosy. Not to mention yours and undernourishment. I know, Father, I know. And what about trachoma, and sparachatosis, and bilharzia? Now here you come, bellyaching about Ellie. Listen to me. All right, you're a priest, a missionary. You spend your day surrounded by open sores and wounds and naked human ugliness and misery, but... Don't you sometimes, don't you sometimes long to climb a hill and, and look at something different, something big and strong and free? When I want to look at something big and strong and free, I don't look at elephants, my dear boy. I look at God. Well, it isn't a pact with the devil I'm asking you to sign. It's, it's simply a petition to stop people killing elephants. And remember, they haven't sinned. Who haven't? The elephants, Father, the elephants. Have a drink. No, thank you. Yeah. If you feel the need of something different, why stop at elephants? Why not look further for something much bigger that is threatened with extinction? 
from the hearts of men. Perhaps you're right. But why does that prevent you from signing? It's not your soul I'm asking for, only a signature. Fix your eyes on God, my boy. You won't sign? No, and I'll tell you why. I have an idea that you want me to sign. Not for the animals, but against men. You're fed up with men, so you've gone over to the animals. Well, I'm not going to do it. Remember, men have a soul. Perhaps. But they ought to show it sometimes. Goodbye, Father. Think about it. I know you will. job on you. The most beautiful black eyes I've ever seen. <laughs> All the romantic hues of an equatorial sunset. It was no joke. I can tell you that. No. Of course, poor boy, it was no joke at all. But tell me, how many elephants did you get before he got you? Three big tuskers, about 220 kilos at the very least. I decided to spend the night in town. I want a room. I'm sorry, we are filled up. I've already spoken to Habib, and he says he's quite sure you'll be able to uh, take care of me. I could, but I won't. What's wrong with me, huh? I'm a good deal better than all the others in there. Maybe you are, Monsieur Sini. But I don't like your eyes. I didn't ask. Oh, the way you talk. No. I don't like anything about you. Ah, Mina, my beauty. What was the message this man Morel left for me? He said that if you ever caught this piece of human filth shooting elephants again, you would kill him. <laughs> well, it's a very spirited gentleman. Hmm. <laughs> he meant every word of it. Ah. By the way, if you are so worried about taking care of Monsieur Arsini, why don't you give him your room? <laughs> well, here's something that will help to console you. Best remedy there is. Cures everything. And then, in marches, this lunatic urging me to sign a petition this long to ban hunting of elephants in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> he came barging into my place, too. <laughs> He's a queer bird, all right. He tried to stop me collecting specimens for the zoos. <laughs> what does he expect me to do? Starve to death? Eh? <laughs> he seems to have tackled us all. All except me. But I'm going to uh, get my reporters to tackle him, mark my words. I'm going to make this uh, idiotic petition of his the laugh of this territory. <coughs> this is it. <laughs> a priceless document. Your wife must be at the top of his blacklist. What's her grand total? 501, to be precise. Not to mention lions and buffaloes and other stuff, but listen to this. Man on this planet has reached a point where he needs all the friendship he can find. In his loneliness, he has need of all the elephants, all the animals, and all the birds. <laughs> Wait, it gets better. It is time to show that we are capable of preserving this gigantic natural splendor which still lives in our midst, to prove that there is still room among us for such a freedom. <laughs> freedom, this fellow ought to be in a straitjacket. Here is another bit. 
We, the undersigned, call for the abolition of elephant hunting in all its forms, beginning with the most ignoble, the hunting of trophies for pleasure. me, my good sir, how many uh, uh, signatures have you got on your petition? None. Can I have one, please? I'd like to sign. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just a moment. I should also like to sign that. Three cheers for the elephants! Oh, mademoiselle, might I have a small uh, representative scotch? I'd like to drink to their noble health, sir. Thank you. Um, do you have that uh, petition? <laughs> Certainly. Thank you. Well, sir, I must say that I was very impressed with what you said there. I like very much that business of the need Friendship. Friendship. Like that. Oh, well. Thank you. As a matter of fact, I also have a friend. Just a moment. You'd like to see him? Come on. Sure. Yeah. I have this small friend here. His name is Toto. Mm. This is my friend Toto. May I present you? Toto, this is Mr. Morel. Of mm. course, Morel. Would you care to join us in a drink, sir? I'd be glad to. Thank you. Toto is a Mexican jumping bean. Come on, Toto, give a little jump. That's it! Stop! <laughs> you see, Toto has a, a little worm inside him, and it tries to eat its way out. And, of course, this makes Toto try to jump out of his skin, if you understand what I mean. I understand. Ah, well, well, sir, here is to... Jolly old Jumbo and little Toto. The great and the small. May they go on and on and on and on and on. Well, well, that makes a most uh, imposing array. This um, um, lady with her wide experience of uh, human nature, I should have thought, rather than the animal kingdom. And this uh, convivial English military man, with his glorious war record. <laughs> Two very edifying signatures, I must say. You can't wipe out a whole race just to keep the world supplied with billiard balls and paper knives. Monsieur Morel. You're not what I expected to find in the Fort Lamy. I suppose one finer girl like me everywhere. I doubt it. Yeah. How'd you happen to land up here? I was working at a Kit Kat club in Tunis. Habib saw me and offered me a job. We finally came to terms. He was a louse. It never mattered. And besides, Fola me seemed so far away. So warm. Warm? Mm. I've never forgotten the cold of Berlin during the war. The snow. 
goosebumps, the ice, the feeling that sunshine never existed anywhere. Berlin. The Germans put me in one of those places for soldiers. Dolls' houses. Barbed wire around them. Sentries outside. Dolls' houses. But I wasn't there long. The Russians came and liberated us. Then... I don't know why I'm telling you all this. I think I know. Then the Americans. Then the French, the English. You have no idea how many times I was liberated. Liberated? It hardly exists. There are more important things. Anyway. It's not when men take off their uniforms that they are their worst. It's when they put them on. The only thing who really sticks in my memory is the brass buckles of their belts. Now you know why I signed your petition. You were the first. You must not take it so hard, Monsieur Morel. The man has got to eat, to hunt, to kill, and sometimes to be killed himself. That's a fact of nature. It's a fact of nature that we should change. Perhaps. But let me tell you, you are going about it in the wrong way. He's right. He's absolutely right. I've been going about it the wrong way all the time. Whatever you do, good luck to you. into the stockade. Sai Sedgwick, these words are beamed to you from deep in the dark continent of Africa, the savage heart of the biggest big game country on earth. And friends, I want to tell you, if you can take it, this is the life. Oh, it's rough. It's raw, dangerous. But if you love danger, and some of us still do, well, then nothing. No, not the faded elegance of London or the gay sophistication of Paris or <laughs> the crumbling splendors of Greece or Rome. Nothing in this old world can approach the sheer thrill of standing alone in the primeval wilderness and matching your wits and your nerve against one of the big ones. 
That's what we got here, friends. The big ones. Yes, sir. Why, I remember when I brought down my first elephant. I... Ah! I'm shot. Bleeding. Positively bleeding. We're under attack. Never mind the Trendex. I said, never mind the Trendex. Remember the sponsor identification. That's all that counts. And when you call me back, sure, I'll be here. A very special visitor for you, Monsieur Sedgwick. The governor, all the way from Fort Lamy. The French governor. My dear Mr. Sedgwick. Ah, bonjour, Your Excellency. Mighty fine. Uh, sister, would you please pass the His Excellency another glass and some more ice? No, no, thank you, thank you. Uh, Mr. Sedgwick, I am to convey to you the profoundest apologies on behalf of the Minister for the Colonies for this uh, shocking misadventure. Unfortunately, there is a man at large at the moment. Yeah, I know. A man called Morel. Here's his... Uh... Manifesto addressed to me personally. Hmm. I need hardly say, monsieur, that the offender will be caught and he will receive the punishment he deserves. Leave that man alone. You understand me? Let him be. Let him carry on. You got that straight, Your Excellency? I like him. He spits on us, on all of us, and he's right. I've been waiting all my life for somebody to spit on me. Now, finally, somebody's had the guts to do it, and you know what? Suddenly, it gets to be almost bearable to be a man. So I'm giving you fair warning. Leave him alone. My dear sir, I don't accept orders from anyone here. Listen, Governor. I'm flying back to New York tomorrow, and when I get there, I'm not only going to move the vast TV public in its millions with my story of the man who dares to spit humanity in the eye, but if any at all should happen to that man, Your Excellency, I'm going to make the very name of France stink. Stink in the nostrils of posterity for generations to come. I see my colony is becoming a general asylum for lunatics. Good day, sir. Aren't you afraid you went a little too far this time? After all, he is the governor. I didn't go far enough. You don't seem to realize, boy, this is the hottest story since Stanley found Livingston. You got your notebook, take this down. Today, in French Equatorial Africa, there's roaming through the forests a modern Robin Hood, risking his freedom, his very life, expressing his disgust at humanity. Uh, well, no, wait a minute, maybe that's too strong. We don't want the dear public to have its feelings hurt. Change that to risking his freedom in the defense of the elephant which is threatened with extinction by our so-called civilization. I call on all decent, right-thinking Americans to rise to the defense of the African herd. For too long, a short-sighted colonial policy has been hounding this valiant Frenchman while the slaughter of the noblest creatures left on Earth goes on and on. And why? Why? Because the French colonial government wants to break the British colonial government's monopoly of elephant hunting in Kenya and Tanganyika. That's why. I call upon every conscientious man and woman. Search your souls. Which side are you on? The colonial governments or the elephants? This is Cy Sedgwick speaking to you live from New York. I thank you and I bid you good evening.
Madam, there is another bus load. Well, that's another go to Dallas here. How do I get to the telegraph? I've got to interview the governor. Where's the government? Got a farm like that. Elephants. 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 Somebody Elephants. must know very Tell me, are you for or against him, Mr. House? My bottom bleeds for him. Pardon me, sir. Don't you live in Fort Lammy? One might say so, sir. I wonder if you could put us in a picture about Morel. They say he came here frequently. Yes. <laughs> I suppose he did. Perhaps you'd care to join us in a drink. I never touch the stuff. Mademoiselle, a large whiskey, if you please. Thank you very much. Toto's a little thirsty today. Is he always so rude? Always. I wonder if you could give me a room with bath. Oh, uh, sorry. You have to sleep on the terrace. They say he's been badly wounded by a white hunter and left to die in a native village south of Batango. No, that is just a rumor. Apparently, you gentlemen haven't heard the latest. He's no longer alone. And who's with him? Well, Professor Ostrak, the man who opposed the hydrogen bomb, is in his camp, and Pierre Quist, the famous Danish naturalist. What about Dr. Schweitzer and uh, Professor Oppenheimer and the ghost of Einstein? Are they with him, too? Of course they are. I'll tell you all about it if you really want to know. This man, Morel, isn't really defending elephants. He's defending us. We're all threatened with extinction. One more of those hydrogen bombs, a couple of those Sputniks whizzing around up here, and we'll all go up in smoke like the poor ruddy old elephants. What is your opinion, mademoiselle? Is he really a defender of mankind or an out-and-out -out lunatic? Did it ever occur to you that he might just happen to be fond of elephants? Gentlemen, we are in trouble. Colonel, will you kindly take a battalion, whatever you think you need, and lay on a thorough search along here, between the 16th and 18th parallels, since that wretched Sedgwick had himself shot in the... Uh... Shot in the uh, rear, sir. Since then, we haven't had a moment's peace. He started a full hate campaign against us, and it is still on. And now we have this plague of journalists. Come in. Ah, there you are, saint -Denis. Any luck, Major? I'm afraid not, sir. Nobody talks about anything else, but there is not a real clue anywhere. No. In the post office, there are over 2,000 cables addressed to Morel, received from all over the world. 2,000 cables? And more coming in every day. Well, if we have to start shooting it out with him, it won't make us very popular, I'm afraid. Gentlemen, I'll tell you something more. I have a strong suspicion Waitari is behind him. And don't underestimate Waitari, gentlemen. He's an extraordinary man, perhaps even a great man. Too bad we've lost him. Well, maybe we'll have him with us again someday. We could do with his help if he were a little less ambitious. The last thing Africa needs is an African Napoleon. Sandney, you know the Uli district as well as any man alive. Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, when I die, one of the witch doctors up there is having me reincarnated as a tree. <laughs> uh, do you think you can find Morel if you set out on your own? Yes, I think I can. Good. Oh, dear, Ivory. I'll probably get shot myself in the... in the rear, sir. It seems we have arrived. 
<laughs> Corotoro, you old cattle thief. I thought you were in jail. Jail, no good place. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, no. <laughs> I heard that you were no longer alone. A man is never alone when he fights for good cause. Monsieur Pierre Christ, when we offered you hospitality in Equatorial Africa, you were supposed to be on a scientific mission. My duty is to protect all the species, all the living roots that have been planted into the earth. I've been fighting all my life for their preservation. Man is destroying the forests, poisoning the ocean, poisoning the very air we breathe with radiations. The oceans, the forests, the races of animals, mankind are the roots of heaven. Poison heaven at its roots, and the tree will wither and die. The stars will go out, and heaven will be destroyed. Oh. You. I thought you were the last person in the world who would be interested in the protection of elephants. Monsieur Morel pointed out quite rightly that the elephants are the symbol of African freedom. They will be the emblems we will put on our flags. And when we have the power firmly in our hands, we will protect them. Do you realize that you are being exploited for political purposes? He's helping me. You are helping him. Let's say we're useful to each other. Personally, I have no patience with nationalists, any of them. But nobody paid the slightest attention to my petition. Now, when they find it's being used politically, they'll get frightened. They'll have to do something about it. What are you hiding there for, Havid? Don't be shy. Come on out from behind the truck. May the high seas rock me. What are you doing here, you old hermit? Come to join us? <laughs> yes, it's me, all right. Inflamed by the beauty of a noble idea, rushed to the rescue of the elephants, always ready to die for a great cause. <laughs> if you give yourself up now and come back with me to Fort Lamy, you get no more than a reprimand or a suspended sentence. They sent you here to tell me that. It wasn't worth tiring your horse. The new conference for the protection of nature is meeting soon in the Congo. When the killing's forbidden by law, the killing of all living things, then I'll give myself up. But not before. The killings will go on. Whatever the conference decides, we have it in our blood. They aim at the soft spot between the eye and the ear, just because it's big, free, and beautiful. That's what they call a fine shot. They say the elephants have to disappear in the wake of progress. They get in the way of roads and telegraph poles. There's no room in the modern world for such freedom. Well, I don't accept that. So you will go on? Sure, I'll go on. I'll go on as long as it takes. All right, I'll go back and tell them. Isn't there anything else you want me to tell them? Yes, we're practically out of ammunition. We're short of everything, including medicine. You might let them know. You really expect them to supply you with such things? Tell them anyway. You never know.
If you ask me, the chap's clean off his nut. Of course he is. Take the first reptile that left the water a million years ago to live on the land without lungs. He was off his nut, too. But in the end, the reptile turned into a human being. Perhaps we might, too. This is in the house. Mademoiselle Rumpley. Why, Saint-Denis! We haven't seen you for ages. Everyone said you had settled down as a rich doctor. They did, eh? Huh? <laughs> I see we have a new attraction here, huh? Did you hear anything about our friend who's become so famous? Oh, yes, yes. As a matter of fact, I did. <clears throat> I went to see him a couple of days ago, officially. Well, Oh, somewhere over there in the Potter country. Was he uh, alone? Well, I've never seen a man more alone in my whole life. But he had a number of companions, if that's what you mean. Did he, uh, did he say anything to you? Oh, yes, quite a lot. So you didn't... Mm. I did not shoot at him. Why didn't you arrest him, then? I was vastly outnumbered. Ah. At any rate, there are times when it's hard to say who is right, who is wrong. Not for a government servant. Uh, that's right. At least I suppose it is. You made your report to the governor yet? No. But I shall. I shall. I want to talk to you. Come. Please, come. My room's up there. Oh, don't worry. Nobody will see you. Sit down. Would you like a drink? Thank you. I have a bottle of brandy. That's not too bad. I brought this from Casablanca. I'm willing to pay you. Hmm. I see. Now, what am I supposed to be paid for? Don't tell them where he is. Who? Moel. I beg you not tell them. <laughs> you must love him very much. It's not that. I don't think it is. I just want to help him. Hmm. Well, mademoiselle, if you want to help him, you can take him some arms and ammunition. That's what he asked me for. <laughs> I don't think I have ever met a more confident man in my whole life. He knew I was sent by the governor to ask him to surrender. And all he had to say was to ask for arms and supplies, that he really thought I was going to get them for. Him. As a matter of fact, I almost did. He has something about him that makes you want to help him. Look at me. Here I am back from a mission, and I can't even bring myself to, to report to the governor. 
Where is he? He has too big a heart. He wants to protect every living thing on earth, but I never saw a man more in need of protection himself. Where is he? I'll do anything you say. What's the matter? Don't you like me? Mademoiselle, you are very attractive, but you are also very stupid. I would have thought that you were a better judge of men. But perhaps you could help him. He's in trouble. He's in deep trouble. He's guilty of the oldest crime. Putting too much faith in human beings. Perhaps you can convince him. You can succeed where I have failed. Tell him to surrender. Because if he goes on much longer like this, he will be shot in the back by one of his associates or by our police. Now, maybe I am stupid, too. But I have a feeling that he will listen to you. Here, I'll show you on this map. A 300 miles from Fort Lemmy is the village of Obo. There's an old Ure witch doctor called Dwala. A very powerful witch doctor. He gave me this amulet many, many years ago. Now, you give this to him. He will know that we are friends and he will trust you. What will you tell the governor? Everything. But I won't give him an amulet. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Good night, my dear. Good night. Dick. Huh? Wake up. Huh? Dick, wake up. What? Huh? Wake up. What is it? What is it? Oh, it's you, <laughs> Uh, another large whiskey, if you please. I want your help. I'm going to find Morel. Morel? Yes, you know him. You signed his petition. Oh, Morel, you mean the old elephant chap. All right, dear. What makes you think you can find him? Nobody else can. I have talked to somebody who knows him, who knows where he is. I have a map, everything. <laughs> Toto. I think this calls for a little drink, don't you? I want your help. I need your help. Well, my dear, if you put it this way, how could I possibly refuse you? <laughs> Supplies, ammunition, everything. You can get anything here for money. Now where do we go? Across the river.
I know. Strange, isn't it? The things you most want to touch in life don't want you to touch them. So you know all about it. Everybody does. The air's full of invisible scandal mongers, maligning little horrors, all anxious to carry the good news. Well, what did they tell you about me? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. The ruins. Or didn't they mention them by name? The ruins? Hmm. It's the color of a horse. Lots of horses. <laughs> it's also the name of a very grand English regiment. Hmm. Very grand indeed. I was dropped into the middle of the Balkans in command of 15 dashing Romans. Uh, dropped by parachute, I mean, uh, not off horses. You mean you haven't heard the rest of the glorious details? We were caught. The other 14 got shot. They got shot because they wouldn't talk, the damn fools. These ruddy fools wouldn't talk. And so, there they all are now. And here am I. <laughs> on top of the ruddy world. on the map. It's off the main road at the end of an avenue of mango trees. And the printing works are in the garden behind the house. I wish I could come with you. You're not coming? No. I've got to drive over to the Sudan border. I'm speaking at a meeting there. Drive? But not in a truck. You can't take the truck. 
You can call your meeting any time you like, but the ball tomorrow night is the only time they'll all be together. Two people waiting on the trail. They're asking for you. All right. You shall have the truck and three of my best men. I also give you Yusuf. Thank you, White Diary. <laughs> I never heard such a lunatic chatter in my whole life. A single solitary truck, another meeting, and what does it all amount to? Nothing, zero. A large circular knot. <laughs> but how I love you, idealist. Always somewhere you are starting a fight. Well, I hope his human highness lives long enough to learn his lesson. I bet you he ends up as an ivory trader. Life knows how to deal with idealists, don't you worry. He must never be captured. Captured alive, you mean? He has been invaluable to my movement. I must guard him carefully. If he is made to stand up in a courtroom like a prisoner, he would be revealed to the whole world as little more than a crank. It would be better for him to die and remain a living legend. But what has this Morel ever done for you? He got your name into the papers. Is that it? Is that what you're seeking? Publicity? What do you expect me to do at this stage? I have little more than a handful of followers. No money, no arms. Progress must be gradual. I am still at the phase of propaganda and consolidation. <laughs> propaganda, consolidation. <laughs> it's a pity you went to France, all those books. Your head is full of long, long words, but you lost your proper instinct. What would your grandfather, your great-grandfather, be doing at such a time? Would they be talking of propaganda, consolidation? Would they be setting up for yet another meeting? They would be telling their tribesmen to sharpen their spears and cut fresh arrows. You have taken Morel's elephant as the emblem of your movement. But it is high time you understood that this noble animal is not just an emblem. It is the solution of all your little difficulties. Ah, not a cloud in the sky, not even one. The water holes are drying up. What a magnificent time to observe the glories of nature at close range. I saw Saint Denis. He told me where to find you. I knew you needed help. Major Forsyth brought me. Mina. Where'd you learn that song? In a dollhouse in Germany. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, yes, I agree with you entirely. What's the matter with him? 
Can't he speak? Of course, my dear. He talks 14 languages fluently. And he's a doctor of philosophy. But he's disillusioned in mankind. He's taking an oath never to talk in human language again until we change our ways and learn dignity. What's that? Baboons. They're always quarreling about something. Elephant, isn't it? Yes, an old solitary. They always live alone. It's good to know they're still about. The drought's early this year. What does that mean? When the rains are late, the animals move to the last water holes. Some of them die on the way. Have you always felt the way you do about elephants? It started in Germany when I was a prisoner of war. It's important to have something to hang on to. Something different to think about. That's when the elephants came in. They were the most different thing I could imagine from prison walls and barbed wire. They were the very image of freedom and space. I used to picture them moving irresistibly through Africa, across the savanna and over the hills. I held on to that image of freedom. It helped me survive. You better go to sleep now. We start at sunup. I'm already dreaming. Don't worry about me, old boy. I'll start tapering off as soon as we get among the elephants. It's only the company of men that drives me the dream. Not your company, of course. <laughs> well... Can you build a modern country with things like that in your way? Why on earth did you come with me? Watari's orders. We bunk to the ties now? No, not yet. You stay here with the others.
Hello there. It's good to see you, Mr. Morel. So you know me. Your picture is everywhere. Would you be kind enough to print this in tomorrow's edition on the front page with big headlines? I like it. It's good. Well, what about a little touch, old boy? Just to keep the chill out? Hey. Mm. My house is next door. I can get you some beer. And my wife will be pleased to make you some sandwiches. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Yes? And give the alarm? Yeah, go ahead. Suppose they have a telephone. There is a telephone. Please go. Take that on. Very interesting subspecies. Antilopsi africano. Yes, 501. The last one was an ugly customer. I fired seven shots into him, but this brute just kept coming on and on. So I waited till he was close. Then I dumped in three more, right here behind the ear. Well, over he went. He carried more ivory than any elephant I've ever shot. <laughs> well, then. You've done plenty. Take it round to the front. Keep the engine running.
What is the meaning of this? We came to have a word with Madame Orsini. Communique of the World Committee for the Protection of Nature. Sanctions have been taken against Madame Orsini, the woman champion of big game hunting in equatorial Africa. The offender has been sentenced to public chastisement. The committee recalls that it has no political character and that considerations of ideology, doctrine, party, race, class and nationality are completely foreign to it. It appeals solely to the feelings and dignity in every human being without discrimination and with no other thought than to call for a new international agreement on the protection of nature, beginning with the elephants, the biggest of man's company on earth. And now the sentence will be carried out. Professor Quist. If you dare touch a hair on her head. It's not her head that's going to be touched. And just to avoid any misunderstanding, I am calling upon the oldest among us to give her 12 of the best. Let me down! Let me down! How dare you! You brute! You dirty brute! Let me down at once! How dare you! Oh, you brute! This is an outrage! Let me down at once, I tell you! Let me down! How dare you do this to me? How dare you? How? Oh, I'm... Oh! How dare you? Let me down! Two, How dare you? Uh, you three, brute! Let me down! Oh, four, this is an absolute outrage! Ouch! Five, Let me down! Oh! I'll never six, forgive you for this! Never, never! Oh! Seven. Stop it! I'll stop! Ouch! Eight, Let me down! Oh! Oh, silly! Oh! Ten, I'll stop it, I tell you! Oh! Eleven! This is really awful! Ouch! Ouch! Twelve. Well, that's all for tonight. I don't accept your explanations. You have absolutely no excuse. You've all been telling me for the last few weeks that the fellow was a hundred of miles away in the Willy Hills, and now he appears in Seanville and makes us the laughing stock of the world. <laughs> Seanville. We'll have him here next. If all this happened two hours ago, why am I only hearing about it now? The wires were cut, sir. Your agents are quite useless. Sir, we are dealing with an exceptional case. Everybody, both Africans and Europeans, have developed the most protective feeling about Morel. They all seem determined to shelter him. In the tribes, he's known as the ancestor of the elephants. <laughs> I'm not looking for excuses, sir, but it's difficult to fight against a legend. 
And what about that missing girl? And the Englishman? We have found their car. It seems likely that they have joined Morel, taking him some supplies. One thing, however, is clear. At the Sionville raid, neither Habib nor Watari were with him. Colonel, take everything you've got, including the Camel Corps unit at Biondi. Break the whole district between Sionville and the Willie Hills. Get Morel dead or alive. Uh, no, no, not dead. We don't want them to become martyrs. And besides, I'm not an ogre. I've been ten years in Africa, and I've never killed anything bigger than a fly. This is on sale everywhere, sir. There is even a black market on it. People are paying any price to get a copy. Or seen his rag. Have a look at this. <laughs> what are you all grinning at? Report to me at noon. Monsieur Morel, you have betrayed us. Why didn't you mention a word about our movement in your manifesto? I suppose I didn't think about it. You're lying. You have used us. Well, you've used me. Haven't you? Turn east to it and head for Lake Kuru. There's water there. His people moved Shanghai, out when the elephants came in. They spoiled the fishing. Some of the herds have come hundreds of miles. They know the lake will never dry out even the worst drought years. Come in, huh? Look, Mina, look. Look. It's perhaps the greatest gathering that's ever been of living flesh in uncounted thousands of years. Gigantic freedom, you say, huh? Now I understand. The 
are the strongest creatures on Earth. Yet no animal fears them. They're friends with the birds, the gazelles roam among them. Man, only man, is their enemy. He has to pursue, kill, and maim them, turning their gentleness into hatred. And then he calls them rogues. The greatest elephant slaughter in history took place here 30 years ago, during a drought like this. Ivory poachers seized the opportunity and killed over 500 in a day. After it was over, the lake ran red with blood. Blood of animals who feed on tender green branches that grow on the top of forest trees. And, and wild young water lilies in the river. Are you all right? Oh, hello there. Yeah, yeah. I got a great picture. The pilot's dead. He's still in there. Yeah, he's killed outright. I made sure before he got out. Where'd you come from? United States. Excuse me. I rather gathered that. Oh, no, I hired the plane at Fort Lamy. Place is full of journalists. I, they're all covering that Morell story. You know, the fellow went over to the elephants. I couldn't get a line on him. I got bored. Started to do this series on big game. I was getting some great pictures. Motor conked out. Who are you? My name's Forsyth. Aren't you supposed to be with him? Hmm. With Morale? Yes. Well, where is he? Give him to me. Where's the fella? Keep icy calm, old boy. You're hurt. T tell me, what's he like? Is he mad? Of course. Aren't we all? Morale, Mr. Rock. I, I, and, uh, 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 I recognize you from your pictures. Hold it, please. Ooh, what a break. F-11. Uh, get, get, get in close. Please, please, please. Close, close. Look at her. Look at him. That's it. Hold still. Look at him. Look at him. Little smile. Wonderful, wonderful. Professor, could you move in? Oh, what a break. F-16. What a break. That, that's it. Thank you, thank you. Look. No, 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 please. Right, right this way. Thank you. All of it. All right here, please. That's it. One more. Excellent. One more now. This is wonderful. This will pay the rent in my flat in Paris for the next two years. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Abe Fields. How do you do? I'm a photographer. No. Were you alone in the plane? No. The pilot's killed. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? No, go ahead. Mr. Morrell, you've wounded a lot of hunters, and you've, you've burned a lot of ivory stores, but you never killed anyone. Is that an accident? I aimed as well as I could. So as not to kill. You can never teach a man anything by killing him. Just the reverse, you make him forget everything. Yes. Say, do you mind if I stick with you for a while? If you want to. Thank you. It was a terrible dream. Snow, the ice. Berlin. All oh, that is far now. Far away.
Morel, three trucks just pulled in. Seem to be filled with soldier fellows. Break of it. Are they soldiers or what? Ivory purchase. Minna, you stay here. What a joy to behold. Just look at them. American Pasca machine gun, machine gun power, power, glory. Yours, White Harry, all yours. Mine is, of course, my modest commission. <sighs> Allah has been good to us. Truly is merciful and loving kind. No, 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 White Harry, no, you mustn't think about Morel at such a moment. Look, even the wind is on our side. Ah, somebody has to roll up their sleeves and do the dirty work, or where would you idealists be? Nowhere. <laughs> Fritz, take your man to the forest, then spread out and wait for the elephants to come to you. Stash and Berber work the shallows. Come on. Good hunting. We'll separate here. Work your ways through to the lake. We must stampede the herds before daylight. I fire, you start firing.
fire. Open fire. Kill as many as you can. another one. You take care of that one. You come. You come.
Take the cameras. Let go of my... Stop! What's the matter with you? These cameras are my property. These pictures are the property of the press. Get that gun out of my back, you fat Who ass. is he? I'm an accredited newspaper man. Fields is my name, Abe Fields. You probably heard of me. My pictures are syndicated all over the world. My name is Waitari. You may have heard of it, too. Ah, Waitari. Oh, sure, sure. Say, I'm, I'm happy to meet you, Mr. Waitari. Hold it, please. What are you doing here? I was photographing those game herds from a plane yesterday. Crashed over by the edge of the lake. You're not a follow up Morel. No, no. Here's my press card. You, you got any doubts? Let him keep his cameras. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Waitari, uh, what do you plan to do with Morel and the rest of them? Kill them. Kill them all! The time has come when we must stamp out our enemies, scatter and exterminate them, rid our country of them forever. The time has come for this. Look, excuse me, excuse me, but if you take it upon yourselves to execute these people, aren't you giving the government the chance it's looking for? To hunt you down and kill you? Hang you from the highest tree? If you want an outside opinion, they won't even give you the courtesy of a firing squad. And, Mr. Waitari, when you die, your movement dies with you. The movement belongs to all of us, not to a single man. You may very well be right, but he's the only one we've heard about in the outside world. After today, the soldiers will be after us. There's no turning back. We must kill and go on killing. Excuse me, please. Morel is the one the soldiers are after, not you. He's been shooting up people for months. But don't, what have you done? Nothing, really. You've defended yourself from attack by a bunch of lunatics. And so you killed a couple of elephants illegally. There's nothing much wrong in that. Take action, I say. Throw away the books and the theories. Our struggle needs blood, oh, hold not on. ink. Give me it again. The struggle needs blood, not ink. Our struggle needs blood. Very good, very good. That's excellent. Thank you very much. That's very good. Thank you. Well, well, well. Here we are all together again. I always said life had a way with you idealists. By the way, you are free. Free as birds. Thanks to the great heart of Waitari. You know, you, you ought to pay me a visit sometime. We could have a little private talk. We might even go into business together. Here's something that might interest you. A fascinating article. The Congo conference adjourned without taking any action whatever. But they made beautiful speeches. The nobility of the sentiments brings tears to the eyes. But that's for your poor elephants. <laughs> ah, those poor elephants. And the price of ivory is going up every day. Oh, dear, dear, dear. I don't mind. That's what the human face is made for, anyway. I'd better get back to business. He's right. All the habits in the world are right. They've been right all along. Right. Sure, they know where they're going. They see the world as it is. The real harm's done by people like me. Well, oh, just look at you. Look what I brought you to. Where have all my fine ideas got us? I'm taking Minna to Biondi. There's a hospital there. 
It's also a military post. I'm turning myself in. I understand you, Moral. You have good reasons to feel bitter. But I pray God that your bitterness may only shake and not destroy your faith. I lived a long time and I know how the world moves. Slowly, oh so slowly towards understanding. With many halls and blind gropings. And what about the people who follow you and love you? What about us? There are lots of us, thousands and thousands, who would like to do what you are doing. But they haven't the courage. They are too tired, too done for. But they understand. They know what you are trying to say. Even the stupidest, like me. They think of you. They think of the elephants. Then suddenly they find themselves smiling. They can't help it. We can't help it. You must go on. We're going on. We're going on to beyond it. And we won't need this anymore. Leave it, Yosef. Leave it. Let it go. Why didn't you go with them? I'm a press photographer, and this is a great story. The scoop of the century, and I got plenty of film left. That's the way to talk. Here's a man who has sense. He's looking for a scoop, and he's going to get one. Stick around, and you'll get the best picture of the lot. The last one. I'm not sick. It's just a chill. It will pass quickly. Ow! You want morphia? No. I had it worse than this. Ranzio, Salerno, Normandy. It is routine. I hit the beach of the first wave of Tarawa, Iwo Jima, Leyte, Okinawa. I'll make out. And you've done all that just to take pictures? Yeah. And you don't care anything at all about elephants? Not a hoop. Suppose we run into troops, and they just shoot him down. When I left Fort Lamy, word was out to get him, dead or alive. They have to shoot me first. It would be rather amusing to be killed in battle at my age. <laughs> Hilarious. How old are you, anyway? Very old. I'd be happy to die in Africa. Why? Because this is where mankind began. And I's better at home. It's three days to beyond the of a very difficult country. Desert and thorn and without shade. They call it the infernal country. We'll head north till we come to another dry riverbed. We follow that till the main road. And beyond it lies at the foot of a great rock. It's impossible to miss it. Come, yourself. We'll get water. Yeah. 
Why is he telling us all this? As if you weren't coming with us. I don't know. Does it mean he's changed his mind about giving himself up? I don't know. Go on, what are you waiting for? How did you know? Your orders were not to let me be captured alive, weren't they? Which are his orders? But I couldn't do it. <laughs> No, I'll be all right. I promise. I promise. Hyenas. Is it our blood? Yeah. When we get to beyond the all this will seem like a nightmare. No. You're wrong. What I go back to will be the nightmare.
leave us. Please leave us. Get away from this throne. I beg you. It's the reason. Now speak more slowly. I... What? Say that again, will you? What? Coming here? Are you sure? Morel? I'll show them. Together. Listen, everybody. They've spotted him on the road to Bundy. He's at it. He's walking right into a trap. Present arms. Caporal, let them pass. <laughs> 